again to Bible Blunt. I want to appreciate God for those who, has, who have been following us, who has been helping us to share our content each time um, we post, especially um, that uh, for some time we dealt with what is prayer. I will try as much as possible to make it, to simplify it because uh, more often than not, uh, we observe these days that people are praying and some don't even have understanding about what they pray. So if you have missed um, that, any of our uh, fellowship um, on that will share concern what is prayer, how do you pray, what are the, what are the criteria uh, of prayer, who do you pray to, who do you pray through, uh, those are the things that we share uh for those episodes or series and then if you are hearing or stumbling on this program fellowship on the platform for the first time this bible blunt uh is bible study we want to share the, we want to give time to the word of god but uh, we give it in a bible blunt where we simplify the bible the way it is um for now one of the observation uh one of the things we observed now God wants us to, to, to talk about, to teach about his marriage. Now it is not, uh, it is not about man made ma marriage, it's not about anything, it's about um, the person that instituted marriage. So we want to talk about for some time what is the biblical view of marriage. When I mean biblical view, I'm talking about the person that instituted marriage which is god what was his intent concerning marriage and um, i've done one or two researches uh you know to be able to share with you make you understand uh what i want to share about you know too far from perfect people are covenanting their life together in sickness and in health for better or for worse until death part them. Now, that's a wonderful, uh, beautiful picture of Jesus Christ, the groom, and his never ending love for the church, which is the bride, defining what marriage is. You know, it's funny how. Our perception of things changes over time. For example, when as a child, you know, I thought marriage was this mysterious thing called love. Love was a noun. Whether you had it or not was dependent on whether you checked yes or no. Now, I grew up to be an adolescent. I thought marriage was how you had children. The inevitable next step is in adult, in you no. Know, the next step to adulthood but come to find out there is more to it than just marriage now in college our institution i thought marriage was about emotions then puberty and the rest was there emotions of love the poetry the love song the warm the fuzzy feeling now i thought marriage was like that then bam you know one got married you know from a now, marriage being a now, when I was growing up, it became a verb. Now I've been married for some time now, and I've discovered that marriage is all of the above. Even more, if we consider, you know, from, like I said, I did a research, from doing my research, from what the Asian Greek had to say about marriage. Many of us have different ideas of what marriage is all about. Now, what we want to start sharing, helping people to understand again, bring it to focus. What marriage is, is Christian marriage. 
not worldly marriage. That's why we want to don't forget this is Bible blunt. We want to tell you the truth the way it is. So many of us have different opinions of what marriage is all about. If you have been married for a while, you have probably discovered that your spouse and you have different ideas, which has probably led to more than a few discussion. So what is I would say trust much as possible to define other people's, um, you know, bring, uh, define other people's, uh, what they mean by marriage as in Christian. Now, there is all, also an increasing amount of confusion in our culture on the meaning and purpose of marriage. For example, you know, the following are some of the lies that culture around us says about marriage. Marriage, one, say somebody said marriage, you know, as in some school of thought, marriage is an old social custom created by humans somebody said if i choose the right mate i will have fewer problems another one said choosing to not marry we avoid relationship uh, problems another one said my marriage or my spouse should make me happy and somebody now conclude by saying that divorce sometimes the only option now those are lies from the pit of the devil that is not what the Bible tells me about what marriage is. In defining also what marriage is, the biblical view of, God, of, of marriage is of God's given, voluntary, sexual, and public union of one man and one woman from different families for the purpose of serving God. It is God's given, voluntary, sexual, and public social union of one man and uh, from different family for the purpose of serving God. Marriage was first instituted by God in order of creation, given by God as an unchangeable foundation for life. I am not trying to you know, make this... Um, how will I call it now? Make it hard. What we want to try as someone supposed to do is to simplify it. But I'm just, just trying to you know, lay a foundation what marriage is. So if you have missed it in your marriage or you want to get married right now, please have an understanding. Marriage was first instituted by God in the order of creation, given by God as an unchangeable foundation for human beings. Marriage exists so that through a humanity can serve God through children, through faithful intimacy, through properly ordered sexual relationship. I say it again with you no know, with emphasis. Marriage exists so that through its humanity can serve God through children, through faithful intimacy, and through properly ordered sexual relationship this union is patterned upon the union of god with his people who are his bride christ with his church so understand that within marriage husband are to exercise a role of self-sacrificial headship and wife a poster of godly submission to their wife i know as we go on um I will throw more light into that because there's a, there, there, there also are also some issues that people, you know, I don't understand. Even Christians these days begin to you no know, question, which they are not supposed to do. So this study of Christian marriage, I want to talk about so many things. I want to consider, um, um, I, I want to know, I want to find the right word. First, we want to consider what kind of thing marriage is. This may seem a strange beginning, but it is a foundational to our study. Do not forget, this is Bible blunt. And by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we want to talk about marriage, Christian marriage, how it's supposed to be. The next, we will discuss the point or purpose of marriage. We will also talk about, you know, um, definitely questions what is marriage, purpose of marriage, nature of marriage, so many things, characteristics of marriage, and um, 
and we, we and I will show some scriptures to make you understand what God intends to be. Like I said before, if you have missed it before now, you can come back. And then when I said come back, as in to the right purpose of what marriage is. And you can't do it by yourself. You need the help of God. You need the help of godly counselors. People who are not traditional. People are not because they are pastors, but because they are godly and they are trained. I'm talking about counselors. People that knows what uh, the mind of God is. Marriage is an institution of God's creation order. Now, understand there's a nature of marriage. In understanding that, you know, have it at the front, back, left, right, right of your mind that marriage is an institution of God's creation order, not man made. Not the lies that the world is telling today. So, when culture debates marriage related questions and discuss the ethics of sexual relationship, there is a fundamental divide between those who consider marriage to be, in its essence, a thing given from God and those who regard it as a cultural construct. Now, if you look at Matthew 19, when Jesus Christ asks a question about divorce, it begins by affirming the teaching of Genesis chapter 1 and 2. So, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Genesis 2, verse 18. Matthew 19, verse 4 to 5. Now let me pause because I don't want to just begin to um, rush these things. I just remember I said, I wrote something. Somebody said, uh, I can't pronounce them very well, but I, I think it should be Mitchell. Say, a good marriage will be between a blind wife and a deaf husband. Trying to, you know, what is marriage? It's, 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 it's between. Between a blind wife and a deaf husband. Now, why did he say that? Okay, there's a lot about Christian marriage being different. But what is it that makes it Christian? Now, he now said, said that say, a good marriage will be between a a blind wife and a deaf husband. Marriage, because marriage has gotten, you know, especially Christian marriage these days, has gotten the quite a bad reputation over the years. The bought of seemingly infinite numbers of jokes. Matrimonial, you know, matrimony is a source of endless so, you know, social commentary, gender politics, and governmental debate these days. Somebody said something, uh, Ambrose, he said, love, a temporal insanity curable by marriage. So understand, and I have to just you know, say that because when I saw it, it shocked, shocked me and I had to write it down somewhere for, you know, for me to remind people about it. No, Jesus was saying something in Genesis, reminding people in Genesis chapter 1, um, Affirming it in from uh, in Matthew 19, 4 to 5, Genesis chapter 1, 27, Genesis chapter 2, um, verse 18. And that this he did by taking us back to creation. Jesus affirms what Genesis teaches that the two parts, sexuality of womankind, meaning male and female, and the institution of marriage are given from God. This is given in the double sense of giving and non-negotiable, and giving as gifts. Giving as gifts. Somebody says something, the person of Professor Oliver writes that created order is not negotiable, negotiable within the course of history. It's a part of which neither the terrors 
of chance nor the ingenuity of heart can overthrow. It divines the scope of our freedom and the limits of our fear. That's Professor Oliver saying, saying that to buttress the fact that its marriage is a created order from God, it is given, it is not man made. It is not an idea that originates from man. It is an idea, an ideology that or, or, or no, that originates from God. Marriage is a good and stable institution. Human culture may seek to you know, reinvent it or reshape it. And as we see these days, we hear a lot of uh, marriage between men, marriage between women, marriage by contract, uh, marriage, open marriage. That is, that is not scriptural, that even Christians today practice. If you are joining me for the first time, this is Bible Blunt, and we are starting another um, subject, another topic on Christian marriage. Because we see by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit that many today don't have, they are not knowledgeable, many Christians today are not knowledgeable again about what marriage is, about what Christian marriage is. And if you don't know anything, you always abuse that thing. I want to beg you by God's mercy also, if you are listening to me, there's nothing that God cannot do. There's nothing God cannot change. Whatever is happening in your marriage or has happened to your marriage, you know, I don't, Christians keep forgetting the fact that the only basis to which you can divorce your spouse is on adultery. Even that you know, comes with a clause. What is the clause? Bible, even Jesus Christ you know, told us that you can you you have to forgive your somebody that, that offends you for you know, for the I I put it now. In calculation is over hundred times. And you'll be a fool or a wicked person to begin to calculate uh, my husband or my wife, you have offended me for the first time, 20th, 20th time, the hundredth time. No. So even with that also, there's a, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a clause for forgiveness. Yes, I know there's a lot that, is, that happens, uh, maybe abuse and the rest of it. But I believe there's nothing that God cannot do. But these days people give, people, people give up so easily concerning their marriage. We hear statements like reconcilable uh, differences and then ask them what is that reconcilable differences? Nobody will be able to say anything about it. So we are sharing, I'm sharing concerning what is Christian marriage and I'm trying as much as possible to uh, you know, simplify uh, the foundational purpose of God you know, creating this other called marriage. This other God called marriage. Um, I, I, I don't know. The one of the things I try to share with us is the nature of marriage. It is given. It is a created order from God. So marriage has, of course, many cultural variable expression. People enter marriage through varied ceremonies and engage in marriage in different ways. But in its essence. The institution is a part of created order. I say it again. I'm not saying my own words. I'm saying God's word. It's in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. I didn't write it. It was God that wrote it. So for this reason, we may explore from the Bible its purpose and definition. That being said, please join me again next week, Monday, as I share, as I continue on what Christian marriage is, what Christian marriage should be. I pray for as many that are listening to me right now, that God in His infinite mercy will bring back the love that are sour in your marriage, We bring back, you know, to focus what God's intention is when it comes to your marriage. In the name of Jesus. Please do help us share this content because I know it will save a life, it will save a marriage. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Shalom.